One night, I was casually up doing some maintenance on my combat gear. As I tried to keep myself from going stir-crazy from the silence in the dark, I flipped through the radio channels and stumbled onto a couple of voices I didn't recognize. So we got one more guy, guy coming. He uh, had to go back in and grab a few things before he headed this way. So we're waiting on him. You said the two guys you're with? Uh, Dr. Helvig? Yeah, this is first time for me. Huh. German accent on Deer Isle. That was new. I usually didn't go around with the radio on me, let alone having it receive all the time, but Rory had started keeping it on to be able to pick up on reported mutant sightings, and slowly but surely it got to be a habit of mine too. Not all the time, but definitely more frequently than usual. At least in some part it was thanks to what Cameron had shown me about muting it so he didn't risk broadcasting over an open frequency. Not that I had that much of interest to broadcast anyway, but what I was about to hear would definitely pique my interest. The amount of information I mean, I have Dr. Carr's notes and some of the recordings he's left for me, but this is like my first mission. I heard the name Dr. Carr being name dropped, and I reacted. This name had been mentioned before. Well, I think, like, I was also wondering, like, those uh, uh, scientists that come out of the bunker, like, whoa, Dr. what is that? Yeah, what's what's up with them? We haven't really. Uh, so. They've been under the bunker since the whole outbreak started. But from what I understand, Dr. Kerr is immune, but the rest of them, they don't know how many of the rest of them are, aren't, because they've been breathing like filtered air. Okay. They have to wear full-on hazmat suits. The virus itself is airborne, and they haven't had any contact with the rest of the world in a very long time. As a matter of fact, the first time they came out of that bunker, they were amazed to find any forms of civilization at all. So, are they still there? Like, are they just locked inside, pretty much? I don't know. The last time they came out, they traded with us. We gave them a bunch of tools and equipment for maintaining machinery in exchange for a keycard. They lived in a section of the bunker that nobody else could access. But... Of course. These were the scientists who were living inside the bunker. The ones that had survived all this time since pre-fall. Are they coming out again? Oh, oh you guys are you, you you're the boys from the bunker? Yep. Excellent. Yep, I'm, uh, yeah, I was wait, deputy is that, Robert. Is that Vincent? Is that Vincent yes, the right here? I told you Vincent was here. Hey, Vincent. Oh, howdy Vincent, it's oh, Frank Vin again. Vincent. Now there was a name I hadn't heard in a long time. What's your name? What? Uh, Vincent. Vincent. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. What's, uh, what's your responsibility <laughs> around here? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm with the Sanctuary Rangers. I'm uh, third in command. Oh, okay. He'd been with the Rangers of Sanctuary. After Sanctuary fell, I hadn't known if Vincent had survived, or if he had, what had happened to him. Perhaps he'd taken up with the Riders, or ended up at Salvation. Whatever the case, it seemed like the scientists had met with him before as they clearly knew him. Hey, Frank. Vincent, Dr. Hey, Marcus. Carr specifically wanted to meet you. I know, is, uh, he didn't come out, or...? Uh, this way around, one. since our last know, trip, we, uh, healthy. decided it was probably a little bit too dangerous. So we sent out a small, smaller team out to kind of gather information. Um, anything scientific, just, uh, let Dr. H know he works closely with Carr, and he's a he's chemist tired. himself, so... Heard one of y'all uh, keen in for a soda there, is that true? You guys were talking out of yeah. the Yeah. Haven't had a fizzy pop in a long time. Hey, if anyone's got a fizzy pop. Uh, energy drink still? <laughs> Scheisse. Is it good? Yes, that's good. It is really good to see as many people have, uh, are immune to the actual virus. That was something we were worried about. There'd be a. Uh, 
small group of people left between last visit and the people I see up here. Yeah, there are many survivors still on the, still on the island. Uh, like with any virus, a certain percentage of people will be immune, but uh, probably no epidemiologist is researching that because there's probably not any left. I stayed quiet and just listened. It was rare to partake in a conversation between the scientists and the survivors of Deer Isle, and I didn't want to muddle everything up by interfering. Most of all, I wanted to know what they were going to do next, and if the Burleys might be able to assist in any way. There were three voices that I didn't know. One voice belonged to the German man who went by Dr. Helwig, and he seemed to be an assistant researcher to Dr. Carr himself. Then there were at least two others, whom Vincent had called Frank and Marcus, though I didn't know who was who. One of them, however, seemed to be speaking on behalf of the scientists as a group, and the other was not part of that group, but nevertheless came across as being capable within the field. Are you a medical researcher yourself? You sound pretty knowledgeable. Uh, I'm an economist, a doctor of economics, a completely useless oh. profession anymore. <laughs> but I worked with the uh, UNWHO, with uh, virologists, epidemiologists, and uh, other med medical practitioners for a long time, so I can understand the, the conversations that they have. But I have run into Vincent here at uh, the Nuclear Institute, uh, where there are two nuclear physicists that live right by the nuclear power plant, kind of in the middle of the island. Uh, so far from what I've from what I've seen, from all the survivors I've talked to, they have been the, the most uh, prominent mutant researchers on the island. And uh, actually, uh, Harold gave Vincent a sample that he said was from what? From Warlock himself? Was that right? Yeah. Remember? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, he gave me blood of Warlock and then some of the uh, growth from the. Vincent went on to explain that Harold had managed to get his hands on tissue samples from the biological growths which grew in separate places on Deer Isle. Not only that, but he had also acquired blood from Warlock himself. I wondered at first how he had managed to do that, but then I remembered how Skylar had talked about the blood bag she had stowed away. Maybe there had been enough blood left in there which Skylar could donate to Harold for the cooperative effort to counteract the spread of mutations. This was, of course, just speculation, but it would track if it was true. It's like, I could call out to Bastion and see if, uh, if any of them are awake. Yeah, if they can uh, possibly get us a sample of stuff he's got. So, Dr. H, you have a PCR machine and uh, viral RNA extraction kits and all the materials that you need to, to, to sequence a virus? Computers? Power? Everything? Yeah, I mean, we have a fully functioning lab, yeah. We were working on... Uh, is the appropriate thing to create a, a cure anyway? You are exactly the person that I've been looking for since I arrived on this island then. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, to be clear, I'm just... Hands. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. In this case, I'm more of a carrier, but once I get back, I'll be working as a team if we can get to work and actually make some progress. But I have to understand the problem. So what I know is that there are some kind of big boy mutants and some other subspecies. What else? What's been going on? The scientists went on to discuss the mutants, and Vincent informed them of the collective and how they would sometimes be heard over the radio talking about humanity's destiny and their part in it. It's a collective. Like some kind of guess out consciousness. Well, uh, from what I've seen in my personal experience, I think Marcus, who's, who was just talking, has probably battled them before, but. I've never raised a, a weapon against them, and they've never acted aggressively toward me. I had a close encounter once. It could have killed me if it wanted to, but it did not, so... It seems to me that actually humans are more aggressive toward them than they are to us. Thinking of Rory and his immediate treatment of Dex, I was more than willing to agree with this assessment. Most humans seem to feel resentment towards the mutants, which was partly understandable, since Warlock had essentially used normal, everyday humans as lab rats, in most cases against their will. It was just starting to get interesting when Vincent suddenly cut in. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Somebody has a radio on. Mine is off. Mine is off. And that was it. 
there was no more communication being broadcast as they seemed to have shut off their transmitters. While I could only guess as to the specifics of their outside excursion, it was all very vague and I had no idea as to where they were going next. Though I had caught their current location, the raceway beyond Waldemoro. Soon after the transceiver went quiet, Rory showed up at my door and as we prepared some breakfast, I told him about the radio conversation I'd overheard. Did you wake up in time to hear what was on the radio? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, what was on the radio? Remember everybody's been talking about those scientists? Yeah. Uh, they have apparently emerged from the bunker once again. And uh, okay. they're discussing a cure. Like, they're discussing about... Um, maybe like getting a lab set up or something about like um sequencing virus strains and whatnot i don't know how long they're going to be out for but it i was thinking like it would be interesting to meet them but i think they're pretty far away from here they're at the racetrack the hospital at the racetrack apparently oh hell yeah that's a long fucking way away yeah I also explained how the meeting had gone over with Skylar. She's going to have one um, general store which is going to be available to various traders and we're going to be able to lease it uh, like maybe once a week or something like that. Uh, and we can be, we're going to be able to have it like a storefront. We might also be able to like sell some stuff. For sure. So, some of the people will probably be asking for things like, uh, you know, LMGs and honey badgers and shit like that. Yeah, I know. PDAs and code locks. So, I'm gonna manage the store and I'll send you to Area 42. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, sure. Rory, go fetch. <laughs> nah, I'm just breaking your balls, man. I have I have an idea. Uh, in order to look around a little bit for nails and stuff like that, maybe we should try to head for where Dr. Carr and the scientists are. We could like see if we can find nails on the way, but there's nothing there's no guarantees that they will be there still when we get there. Yeah, yeah. But either way I think uh, yeah we should go on a nice long uh, scavenge run. Refill our coffers. Very true, very true. Where is the? Oh yeah, the hospital. I'm gonna sp I'm gonna put a marker on the hospital by the racetrack, and we can have that sort of a, sort of as a, a focal point to go for. I mean, th as I said, they might not even still be there when, when we're there, but when we get there, but just have it as a target and see what happens when we get there. You up for it? Right. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna go properly geared though. I'm gonna go get fully kit. All right. You'll do that. Yeah. Yep. Jesus, that's gonna be a long journey. The raceway was a hitherto unexplored region by the Burley brothers. As it was located right next to the entrance to Area 42, I decided to take my brother's advice as well and equip some combat gear. While waiting for Rory by the bulletin board, I caught wind of some radio chatter over SATCOM and decided to fill my brother in while waiting for him to gear up. Okay, there has been another development apparently. Um, the uh, uh, the scientists. I'm not sure that they are still by the racetrack. Apparently, they were being watched by something, and that it's. I don't know how they know this, but apparently, it's called an observer. That explains what I heard. What did yeah. you hear? Yeah, there's there was rumor going around that there's a. Uh, a new kind of mutant that's going to be issuing from uh, Warlock's fucking domain. Who said this? Uh, people up in Duskar. Oh, great. Just great. Like, the world didn't have enough to deal with, with mutants like the big boys, the zombie dogs, and the exploding spiders. Now there were observers. Observers? Observing what? Man, this just all felt like a horror movie royal rumble. The sooner this got cured, the better. 
you want some guts? Because uh, apparently my MVS magazine pouch is full of guts for some reason. Uh, no, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the road again. We headed up into Cougar Town with the intention of resupplying for our journey, and I wanted to check to see if Skylar was there too, so I could introduce her to my brother. Hello. Good Hello. God, I didn't even see you. <laughs> like, completely quiet. <laughs> Jeez. I'm like, huh! Ah! Early brother? Yay, yep. that is correct. Oh, shit. <laughs> so what you doing here? Enjoying the sights? Trying to get some uh, some property back. Hey. Oh. Yeah. Hi. Gotcha. Right. Well, uh, you you folks okay? How are you uh, enjoying Cougar Town? Uh, yeah. It's nice, we come for the attraction. You know, yeah. we, we stay for the drinks. Is Skylar around? <laughs> She's around. I don't know where she is currently, but a lot of people are asking after her. Oh, is yeah. Is something that is important, or...? No, it's not a, nothing important. I talked to her yesterday, and I was just gonna see how she was, basically. We're on our way through, actually. Heading north. Oh, where are you guys heading to? Uh, just up north. We're gonna... We haven't really been looting that area. Uh, we need to see if we can find some more supplies. Just go, just go carefully. Don't worry. Is there and, uh, reports of something? Uh, just bears and wolves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen a fucking bear, um, but okay. Um, what's your name, by the way? Oh, well, you'll see him if we go up on that mountain. I'm Killian. I'm oh, Killian I'm you're a Killian. Killian Darkwater. Yeah. yeah, I've heard about you. Nice Where's to the guy's you. name, yeah. Killian Darkwater went a long way back with the Salty Cougar, having been one of its earliest members and subsequent head of security. I'd never met him personally before, but I had heard he was a reliable guy. It's nice to meet you as well. I'm Robin, and you guys, this is uh, Rory. You residents here? Uh, no, we're the Burley family. We're, we're close ah, neighbors, yeah, though. Hey, what's going on, Bill? Hey, hey, welcome back. Yeah, I love you oh, so yeah. Hey. I need to ask you, what was your name? I forgot your name. Or I didn't give it. I didn't get it. <laughs> no, I know thing. It's Johnny. Johnny. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you again, Johnny. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I hope you've enjoyed Cougar Town. Yeah. Absolutely. Doing our best to take care of oh. it. Oh, God. Oh, God. I gotta do something. What? No. Oh. Okay. I think he's taking a shit. <laughs> uh, I mean, you gotta go when you gotta go. Bro. You all right? Need some bad peppers or something? <laughs> I have no idea. While Rory dealt with his um personal situation, Killian asked me about our family. So, what is the Burley family all about? I'm, I haven't heard of you guys before. No, we're pretty small time to be honest. Uh, but we are well. Our ongoing mission is to find the rest of our family members. That's pretty much what we're doing, but uh, in the meantime, we're like trying to settle down, maybe create a small settlement. Uh, right now, we're fortifying our, our uh, base location, just on the other side of the water. It's going to be called Burleyville. Eh? Eh? Hey, it's a nice name. <laughs> I mean, Cougar Town, Burleyville. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do you guys trade? Uh, we do trade. Uh, right now we don't really have that much. I got a lot of guts if you want it. <laughs> I mean, we could all use more guts these days guts. to fight the mutants. <laughs> yeah. No, just, uh, it's good to meet you guys. Yeah, you too, man. Really wonder. Oh, uh, hi there. <laughs> That's Skylar over there, actually. Oh! Oh, and goodbye. <laughs> yeah, she... I need to actually just relay yeah, some information to her real quick. I gotcha. I, I gotcha. Go hey guys, when my brother's done taking a shit, him. could you tell him that we're up there? Uh... Yeah, I got I you. don't know where he is. Just look from around town. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Skylar. Uh, we've got a member of the Burley family here that wanted to say hello to you. <laughs> hey, Sky. What's up? I met... Uh, I met Robin. Yeah, it's me. I am Robin. <laughs> Oh, you oh, sorry, different, sorry, me and faces and masks and... 
Yeah, I tended to forget that my brown cowboy hat sort of had become part of my identity. Most people seem to just not recognize me without it. I was in talks, uh, you might as well hear this too, Johnny, I was in talks with uh, Robin about um, doing uh, like trade agreements and stuff, so... Uh, yeah, you, are, I think you, already, you already told me that. Okay. Well, Alright, though. I wasn't aware of this, but this is good to know. Excellent. Yay, okay. Yeah. Glad that got sorted. Um, one of the, the, I think MD from the uh, hippie tower wanted to speak to you. A spirit Emmy. relayed that to me. Emmy. Why I do people have Emmy. such abstract names? From Just the hippie name tower. like Bill or something. <laughs> yeah, they I wanted mean, to speak to you. Your name's Come on. Hello, Yuri. gentlemen. How hey, are you? There's... Both? Oh, I am Lebby, excuse me. The newcomer, named Yuri, had armbands which I had never seen before. However, I had been told that the three stars were the symbol of the General Assembly, a faction we had heard about previously, which sought to unite the entire Deer Isle archipelago under one banner. Oh, oh is that the Lebby. General Assembly? Lebby. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No, it is. Same guy I rescued. Selling, I'm not interested. Well, Skylar, I was just here I, with my brother. We're actually passing car. through now, so just uh, felt like saying hello and uh, hope that you're good. Better than yesterday, at least. I'm really trying. <laughs> I'm really gotcha. trying today. All right. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. It's... Between 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 you and me. Yeah. This this girl's head's a mess every day. Okay. Way to out her like that. Having your head a mess. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, and uh, for this is my friend Harley. Oh, I've, I've met one of the Burley brothers. I sold him a PE scope and uh, something else. I can't remember. Really? Huh. Must have been Rory then. A PU scope for his vaunted Mosin, I bet. Lord knows, I didn't have a weapon that required it. I was pleasantly surprised that so many people had started to name drop us. Jones, the guys down by the intersection, and now this Harley fellow. The Arbiters might have been the first group to really notice us, but now other people seem to know about us too. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> hey guys, pardon my ignorance since I'm new here, but uh, I just heard in the global radio something about Sirens and Waldo. Be advised all stations bunker might have popped open. What does that mean? This question had me recall something which old Motormouth Matrix had shared with me. When they blared, the sirens of Deer Isle could be heard in every major city all across the region, as they were piped through speakers as part of a pre-fall air raid alert. And these days, they were usually heard in connection with the bunker opening and closing. This had come about as sort of a jerry-rigging of the scientist teams themselves. In anticipation of life being scarce across the island, the sirens acted as a notification system for any and all survivors to make their way up Mount Katahdin when they sounded. This way, the scientists would know that any survivors would be alerted to their emergence and expected people willing to help them in their endeavors to show up at the bunker. This question reminded me of what me and my brother had set out to do in the first place, locate the scientists. Now, it very well may be that the scientists were long gone at this point. Hell, it was almost guaranteed. Still, it wouldn't do to just stand around here. The raceway beckoned, and I felt we needed to get going. Alright. Well, I'm gonna go down to All my right. brother. Okay. He's taking well. a severe shit. Uh, but it was nice meeting you again. We'll talk later. <laughs> Thank oh, you. On. Sorry, you today's just... I've gotten know about that. <laughs> so much... News today. I. Uh, That's no I'm worries. Right now. No uh, worries. Yeah, I, I think I just need a moment to yeah. recollect here. Do that. Take care, and I'll see <laughs> you. I'll you see you later. <laughs> okay. Thank Have you. Seen you. Hugo? Good to meet you, Killian. He, y yes, he was just yeah, here. Nice uh, maybe he's. Is, you too, Yuri. Go? Um, and Harley. You. And Killian. you too. Bye, Robin. And, and bye, Robin's brother. <laughs> wherever he went. And <laughs> again, what was your name? It's Johnny. Johnny, thank you. I swear, next time I'm gonna know that, okay? I, I promise. Hey, it's. <laughs> hey, um, hey, uh, uh, I'm word of advice. With names as well. <laughs> hey, good trick to never have to remember names. You just give everyone a nickname or you just use, you know, 
a, a typical name you say whatever. Can I call you Red I Guy? Feller, you know. <laughs> like Red. Like maybe I am, Red. I am, I am, I am, red I, Militia or something. I, I am, oh, sorry. Oh. What? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, what the? Oh. What? How has that mountain goat you think it could kill me if I jump off it? <laughs> oh, by the way, here's my brother. Hello. Oh, sorry, I had business oh, to take hello. care of. Hello. Ah, well, nice pretty to meet you. Welcome to Cougar Town. <laughs> so, uh, uh, thank you. I've been here before, you know, when it was called something else. Yeah. Your bowels okay now, Rory? Let's not talk. <laughs> I will let, uh, what's your name again? Sa uh. Yuri. It's Yuri. Yuri. Oh, I, I said Yuri. Oh, and you Yuri said it wasn't. Why? Why you confuse me like that? Fuck. I'm not I even high enough to for that. God. Okay. Jeez, nobody knew names around here. Yuri Removic. Then the guy doing the General Assembly. That it would be true. Wait a second. Yuri? Yuri Ramovic. And uh, if you ever want to earn money, like fucking look out for a guy called Floki and capture the fucker. Uh, or Yuri Ramovic or Dimitri Ramovic. Either of the two. Oh, Yuri's the only, the only one left from the Red Militia, right? Mm-hmm. That's why he needs to die. That's right. Alex Woods had told us about him. How he had once been part of the Red Militia and how Alex had wanted us to either capture or kill him and his brother. This was, however, a long time ago, and I hadn't seen Alex in a long while. I knew the Arbiters were acting friendly towards us Burleys, and in all honesty, here I actually had an opportunity to reciprocate on that friendship. I just needed to get him alone. Even if this hadn't been Yuri, I couldn't really imagine that a unified Deer Isle was something that the Arbiters would welcome with open arms regardless. But Yuri seemed to have transitioned from a communist militia member to be someone who sought peaceful unity among the factions. And personally, I felt that whatever promoted stability for Deer Isle was good for all of us. I weighed the pros and cons, but quickly decided to discard the opportunity. Yuri Ramovic, and there was another guy called Dmitry Ramovic? The... He is my brother, but I uh, don't know where he's gone, and to be honest, I don't really care to run after him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotcha. Oh, Alright. Alright, should we get moving? Uh, Killian, I want to have a little chat right. for once. A little, a little chat? Alright, take care, guys. Just one after a fucking drum. Hey, you too, guys. Yo, <laughs> adios. We'd wasted a lot of time at Cougar Town, but we kept going north regardless. I couldn't keep my curiosity under wraps, and I knew that Rory was itching to meet the scientists as well. He'd been very vocal about how he wanted in on the fight against Warlock, and the scientists were people who might have the answers to Warlock's identity as well as origins, knowledge which could prove vital to our efforts. As we approached Waldeboro, we suddenly heard it. You hear the sirens? No. Come over here. Yes, I do too. Yeah. Yep, yep. Is the bunker open again? What the fuck is that? The sirens were blaring again. This could only mean one thing. The bunker door was either opening or closing. And since I had already heard the scientists transmitting on the outside, it seemed likely that they were on their way back to the bunker. If we wanted to catch them, we really had to hurry. Yeah, wait. It stopped. Yeah, it just went off. Yeah. In Waldeboro, we crossed paths with another group of people, individuals wearing blue armbands. Alright. Okay. Since we were in a hurry, we had to keep on going. But I remembered overhearing something that had been mentioned in passing at the Cougar. That was... That was blue armbands, though. And I remember they said something about blue armbands. Who said something? Uh... Last time I was awake, people 
said that people with blue armbands have been robbing people. Yeah. We decided to step on it. The raceway wasn't too far away from Waldborough, so we figured we'd head there first, and if no one was there, we'd make a beeline for the bunker itself. What base is this? Okay, I don't recognize the flag. I think that's just some rando. Oh, there's a bulletin board here. Jacob Combs, we're interested in hearing more about your ideas. Okay, and this one says... Free clinic and medical supply. Oh, okay. Richard Gagnon. What that is. Oh, hey, they stole our flag. Look at that. Oh, for fuck's sake, the hippie towers stole our flag, too. God damn it. We had just left Waldeboro and were climbing the first hill towards the racetrack when we came across someone in the wilds. Oh, Jesus. Hello. Okay, it's a lamplight guy. Hello. Huh. That's not... Is that camera? One of the lamplight guys. Hey. Negative. Oh, okay. Uh, just to be aware, uh, we heard rumor. Wait, is that Sergey? Sergey! Yeah. Hey! hey Sergey. It's the Burleys. I saw the Russian flag. <laughs> hey, how's it going, boys? <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, just an FYI, we heard rumor, or Robin heard rumor, that there's some blue R bands, uh, Robin people, and we just ran into them down the road over there. Well, to be fair, this is, right. uh, this intel is a couple of days old, so it might not be them, but there are blue arm bands, like, down the road. Yeah, bright blue. Alright. <laughs> Right, blue. Yeah, exactly. Just to. I'm just gonna get on moving back to base. Thanks for the yeah, info, yeah. though, boys. Yeah, yeah no worries. Take care. Be careful. Yeah, you too. Give me, be give my best you, to uh, camera. Where are you coming from? I will. <laughs> I'm glad to see you guys are doing all right. Yeah, you too. Uh, I sent uh, Cameron a little gift, a little charred flesh of Jose. I don't know if you ever got it, but. <laughs> nah, the, I saw that the arbiters did him in though. Yeah, they gave me his arm, <laughs> so I sent it along with uh, some of uh, Cameron's belongings back to... Well, I gave it to a couple, I think, I, yeah, I gave it to Sav and some other guy, I don't remember. He was going to give it to me but first, uh, sick fuck. Yeah, <coughs> but you know, I didn't think he would need it. Right, so. Just be careful, the bunker, yeah, yeah. the bunker has been opened twice now, so... Yeah, we heard keep that. Keep your wits about you. Yeah. Now we heard yeah. something about uh, Watcher, is that what it was called? Observer? No, Observer, some, something that was like watching the scientists. Have you met these scientists, guys? I, we literally just came back from that, like... Ah, uh, okay, we were like trying that's to... What, that's, that's literally just what we were doing, like, uh, okay. <laughs> we met them up there at that racetrack. Yeah, we were gonna go there and see if they were still there and like, maybe talk to them. Nah, they left. Aw. Uh. They bounced already. Are they in the bunker again? Is there any, uh, uh, is there any danger? Probably. They were pretty far up ahead of us. Oh, uh, okay. How long ago was that? Well, shit. Right. Like 10, 15 minutes ago. But I think we could actually meet him, cut him off there if you wanted to meet him. I mean, I want to get to the bottom the of this. We could, we could always try. Sure. Did they say when they're yeah, going to yeah. emerge next time? No, I think they did, but I couldn't hear. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Alright, boys. I'm gonna get going on back yep, to yep. base. I got shit I gotta do. Do that. Uh, yeah, we'll I know. Guard duty, on. right? <laughs> <Okay>. Nah. <laughs> okay. Not anymore. I gotcha. Alright. Take care, man. Stay safe, boys. Yeah, you, you too. too. <laughs> As Sergey had told us that the meeting at the raceway was over, we changed destination and began running up Mount Katahdin in order to reach the bunker. Seeing that Sergei had joined Lamplight didn't surprise me. The guy was a hands-on type of person who got shit done, and while he had mostly stood sentry at New Duskar, I was willing to bet that Lamplight would be able to find better uses for his talent. Lately, with all the mutant activity, Lamplight has started to swell in numbers just like the Arbiters had a while back. 
Abductions by warlock and mutant talk over the radio had ignited fear in people's minds, and once something scared you, it was usually a natural reflex to seek refuge with the polar opposites of the problem. In this case, it would be the outspoken mutant hunting lamplighters. Charon was now commanding a small army, and with people like Gil, Cameron, and Sergei, Lamplight was now a force to truly be reckoned with. Closing in on the top of Mount Katahdin after a long and winding uphill run, we could eventually see the signs of the outer perimeter of old world military nature. This was it. We had finally reached the outskirts of the restricted bunker area. This was allegedly Warlock's domain, a secret facility where he could concoct his insane experiments hidden from the rest of the world. According to Harold, however, it also served as the home of the scientist group led by Dr. Carr. How these two groups lived separately from each other and managed to avoid one another, I had no idea. But supposedly, the bunker was a massive complex of tunnels, living quarters, laboratories and storage vaults which spread out underground like a honeycombed labyrinth of secret facilities. So it wasn't completely impossible to think that the underground was split into multiple groups same as the overworld was. I think this is it, bro. You're right. As we approached the bunker, a faint high-pitched audio signal suddenly caught my ears. It was coming from a small guard station just in front of the bunker complex. It was a radio signal. While Rory went to circle around to scout the perimeter, I opted to stay a while and listen. This is a broadcast of the emergency alert system. This is not a test. I repeat, this is not a test. Officials in Washington, D.C., in cooperation with state and local authorities, have issued the following emergency bulletin. Due to the recent unfolding events, all remaining unaffected citizens are strongly urged to cautiously proceed to the nearest Army or National Guard facility. You will not be safe anywhere within the affected area. I repeat, if you are hearing this message, you are within the affected area and will not be safe anywhere. The National Guard, in conjunction with the United States Army, will be setting up rescue stations at these locations to aid in the temporary evacuation of each of the affected cities and towns until the outbreak can be contained and other concerns can be eliminated. If you cannot safely make it to the nearest Army or National Guard facility, please take refuge in the nearest Civil Defense Bomb Shelter, as the Army and National Guard patrols will be checking these sites consistently for survivors. Citizens found exhibiting signs of infection or found with open wounds will be quarantined and contained on site. Martial law has been declared and a mandatory curfew will go into effect at 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight and will continue every night from dusk until dawn until further notice. If you are found on the streets after 8 p.m., you will be met with deadly force. I repeat, anyone found outside after 8 p.m. will be fired upon. By special order, this message will be repeated indefinitely until this emergency bulletin is rescinded. For all those who are left, Good luck and Godspeed. A heavy, somber mood of sympathy and sadness filled me as I listened. It was painful to hear this. A long lost echo of the old world still crying out in a desperate plea for calm. The last message of a now non existent government was still posthumously assuring the public that steps were being taken to contain the outbreak. But they were all dead now. The soldiers, the officials, the politicians, just gone. Lost to the torrents of an ocean of mistakes. Nothing left of the past but ruins, 
quiet skeletons bearing witness to the fall of a mighty nation and a testament to the hubris of the human race. Whatever this Joshua Revit had concocted inside the bunker, it had drastically backfired and erased human society in the making. And just like that, centuries of history and progress were gone. And we who were left behind had been cast back into the Dark Ages. No comforts, no assurances, just survival. But this discovery also made me breathe a little bit easier because now it was pretty much confirmed what had happened. The rumors about the ships were finally more than just hearsay. Deer Isle had been evacuated. Our family had been evacuated. They must have been. I know Kathleen would have acted quickly and Pa would almost certainly have been listening to the radio when all this shit went down. Putting two and two together, it meant that if they got this message, and I knew they would have, they would have left the islands. I was convinced now that we would never see them again. They would almost certainly believe me and Rory to be dead. Hell, they probably had already held a wake for us. I could only take solace in the fact that they would not have died here, in this mutant-infested post-apocalyptic hellhole. And I sincerely hoped that they had indeed made it somewhere, where all of this was just a bad dream. Oh shit, there's a big one. Oh yeah. This is Infestation City. Rory joined me once more and together we approached the bunker proper. We could see biological growths everywhere, the telltale signs of mutant activity. Take up top, I'll go to the front door. Okay. Officially, the KMUC, the Katahdin Military Underground Complex, was a facility shrouded in mystery and secrecy. Built some time during the Reagan years, when we were kids, we used to hear stories about this place and always imagined that it was untouchable. But thanks to Harold, we now knew that Joshua Revit had been part of the scientist team stationed at this bunker, which essentially, for all intents and purposes, made this ground zero. The location where the outbreak had started. It was not yet understood exactly what had been released in the Zulu virus or how the other scientists had managed to survive the outbreak, but with any luck, perhaps we had a chance to get some answers here. I had my own theory which built on Harold's assumption that Warlock in fact was Dr. Joshua Revit. I theorized that perhaps the other scientists had kicked Joshua out of their habitation facility deep inside the bunker, and he, in fact, did no longer have access to the area where Dr. Carr and the others lived. Plain and simply, I wanted to know if Dr. Joshua Revit was still a part of the scientist team. If he wasn't, then Warlock's true identity would more or less be confirmed once and for all. Tell you what, bro, let's get on top of the uh, edges and see if we can see clearly up there. Yeah, that's quite a view. Before we made the final push into the bunker interior, we swept around and double-checked the place one final time. Rory had scouted the perimeter loosely, but we didn't want any surprises coming our way. And true enough, a surprise was exactly what we got. Why am I so cold? Wait, why am I so cold? I'm cold I shouldn't be too, too, actually. Unless there's something near us. Oh, over there, over there. Apparently, the collective watchdogs were not gonna let us in without a fight. Oh, fuck. He's too, too far down. Oh. Oh yeah, there's more dogs down there. Oh shit! Watch out! Fuck me! Fuck me! Got him. Fucking scared the shit out of me, fucking piece of shit. 
o'clock. With the dogs cleared, we gritted our teeth and entered the bunker atrium, heading for the only way down. After having side-skirted what looked like a giant missile silo, we finally saw the entrance. Wondering if there's like mines or anything here. This where the stairs are? Oh! As we went down the stairway, the atmosphere got thick with the cloying odor of the biological growths. There was no escape from it here. I smothered every reflexive cough for fear of making a sound. For all we knew, there could be surveillance equipment like cameras and microphones covering the passage. I also felt the weight of the significance pertaining to this place crushed down on me. If this truly was Ground Zero, then this was the very entrance into the hell that had spawned the walking corpses. Dead dogs, dead dogs, dead dogs. finally reached the massive blast door, we stopped just short of it and stared at it. Behind this steel slab lay the interiors of the bunker, the snaking tunnels and blast-proof vaults containing anything from living scientists to mutants to maybe even Warlock himself somewhere. We didn't know, but we knew that behind this were answers. Hello? Hello? Places give creeps. Yeah, no. Anybody here? We are uh, the Burley Brothers. We're seeking audience. Is, is this some Wizard of Oz shit? But, as we also took in the sheer enormity of the giant bunker door, we knew that it was not going to open for us. Not even a hundred satchel charges were going to make as much as a dent in this thing. No one was around, and no one answered our calls on the intercom. We had been too late. The door must have closed when we heard that firing, yeah. like you said. Either they can't hear us now, or they just don't give a shit. Yeah, they probably don't give a shit, honestly, because I mean, we heard him when we were coming up. I didn't hear them, I, heard them I, I don't doubt you. Yeah. Alright, well, we know where the place is now. I I say we hit the road. Alright. <sighs> daylight again. Smells like shit, but at least it's daylight. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Frustrated at having missed our opportunity, we decided to leave. I wanted to get out of the area before any of Warlock's more capable cronies showed up. The trail of the scientists had gone cold right at the bunker door, leaving us to assume that they were once again cozy down in their quarantine zone. But it hadn't been a day wasted. At least now, we had intel on the layout of the bunker, which up to this moment had only been spoken about in hushed voices. More to the point, knowing that the scientists were still alive and kicking down there was another optimistic sign of things to come, as it reassured us that we weren't all just laymen stumbling in the dark with test tubes and hoping to get lucky, but real educated people in the biochemical sciences were around and we could be comforted in the knowledge that they were working hard to find a cure for the Zulu virus. 
I had also shared the contents of the emergency alert system with Rory, and we both agreed. There was now a good chance that our family had actually made it. No, all in all, I'd say the day had turned out pretty sweet. As it was a long journey home, Rory and I decided to hunker down in an old residential ruin a few mountain tops away. Despite the proximal danger, we both needed some rest to gather our strength before heading back home. Alright, this will have to do then for, for the night. Clear. Come on, you have to get with it. You have to say second floor clear. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks clear. <laughs> Alright, well, put Look, it out. It's a sleeping bag now. And all I have is like a oh, yeah. waterproof clothing bag. Guess I could use that as a pillow, maybe. Let me see if I can do that. Oh, yeah, I can, yeah, look at my pillow. <laughs> well, good night, bro. Hearing my brother snoring once more told me on an instinctual level that all was well. I soon followed his example and went to sleep knowing that despite the horrors of the present, the future was not as devoid of glimmers of hope as I had once thought. <laughs>